Welcome back to an introduction to conic sections. This is the lecture on the parabola. And what we're going to do here is talk about what a parabola actually is in terms of conic sections. Recall from last time that we built conic sections by stacking on each other two inverted cones at their tips and then taking a plane and slicing the uppermost cone, or it doesn't have to be the uppermost, but and then tilting that plane and we were looking at the resulting slices and if you look at this slice here that I've created it turns out to look like a parabola in this on the sheet of paper by definition a parabola is just a set of points in a plane which is that sheet of paper that are equidistant from some fixed point F which we're gonna call the focus and some fixed line which we'll call the directrix I'm gonna assume that you know what a parabola looks like and I'm telling you that really, in reality, these are just a set of all points that are equidistant from this focus here. And uh, that distance would be the same as the distance from a point on, on the parabola to a point, the, the fastest way to get to that point on the, on the line. Now, for sake of argument, I'm going to use the line y equals negative p and you might ask yourself wait a second why is he using y equals negative p as a line does it have to be a negative p well let's take a look at the point zero zero and I take a look at the distance from that foci to that point well if I called the foci if I said the foci was at or the focus sorry was at zero p then the point on this line that's equidistance away from it has to be a distance of p away from it. In other words, it has to be at y equals a negative p. Now let's actually find out an equation that will describe all these points that are equidistant from the focus to this line. So as we can easily see, the distance between the focus and this point that exists um, equidistant uh, to the line, it, uh, we can find it using the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula, whichever you want to call it, they're the same thing really. And then the distance from this point to that line is not just y plus p, I'm going to call it the absolute value because we're talking distances, and eh, distances are really absolute values, um, that, that actually won't make a, a big deal for, for us uh, when we do the calculations, but it's still to be rigorous, uh, we should probably say that. So here's our claim. The distance between the focus and the point on the parabola should be the same as the distance between the directrix and the point on the parabola. If you square both sides, we get the following, x squared plus the quantity y minus p being squared should equal, if you square this side, the absolute value kind of disappears, it's just y plus p being squared. Because once you square something, uh, it makes it positive, unless it's an imaginary number, obviously. So we go ahead and clean this up. This must be true. So here's a relationship between y and x and then that value of p. And this gives us our theorem for parabolas, basically the form for parabolas. The theorem says an equation of the parabola with focus at 0 comma p and directrix at y equals a negative p is x squared equals 4py. Now if you think about that, we're used to seeing um, parabolas having uh, an equation like y equals 3x squared or something like that. That 4p is just a constant. So if you divide both sides by it, it actually is y equals some constant times x squared. Um, and there is a kind of a side theorem here, so let me go ahead and write that out. And essentially it's just um, the case where we have a focus on the y-axis at, or I'm sorry, on the x-axis at x equals p and y equals zero. And then you have a directrix, which is a vertical line at x equals a negative p. Uh, and then the equation for the parabola is y squared equals 4px. So this is the case where you have something like, and of course, the ones we are just doing are the standard parabola that we all know and love this business. Right? Either it opens up or it opens down. Just depends actually on what you, uh, the value you have for p. Now as a quick visualization, 
Again, I have a Wolfram Demonstrations Project sample up here, titled Conic Sections, Equations, and Graphs. I'll be referring to this uh, as we do the other videos as well. But you have a conic section here, and notice they have some extra junk inside this equation. This is for shifted conics, actually, but, but let's first deal with just uh, the idea of x squared is, e is equal to some number times y. Remember that if you were to just, just pretend that this is x squared equals number y. In other words, that you can divide both sides by this number. You get y equals some number times x squared. That means that that conic section or that parabola is either opening up or down. If it was the other way, like this, you'd have x times number is equal to y squared, which means it opens left or right. Okay, but let's, let's just focus on this example. Now all I'm going to do is grab this slider that's on p here just to show you what different values of p will do. If I lower the value of p, notice that that purple point, which is what p is, oops, I didn't mean to go so so negative so quickly. So p right now is 3 fourths and notice when it's 3 fourths the parabola has this very narrow feel to it and it's because the directrix is uh, very close um, to the parabola itself. So when the directrix is very close to parabola it essentially is, is narrowing the parabola. If you pull the directrix away it also starts pulling the parabola wider. Notice that here's the directrix, this green dashed line. As it's a greater distance away, it's essentially bending these uh, the arms of the parabola downward slightly. And also notice that the distance between the directrix and the origin, and the distance be I'm sorry be between the directrix and the origin and the focus and the origin are the same. So I can continue in to increase that. It just gets wider and wider and wider. Here's x squared equals 24y. Now, if I were to let my p value be negative, that's this situation right here. When p is negative, notice that the parabola is opening downward. And we still have the same situation that as you let p be very negative, like a negative 24, it basically, the directrix is pulling the bars of, or the arms of the parabola out wider. So uh, if you can visualize that as directrix gets closer, it doesn't pull so much, so the, the parabola gets narrower. Um, but the further away the directrix is, the wider the parabola. Now I'm going to take a moment just to um, remind you of something. When At this point in mathematics, you should have done uh, translations or shifts and reflections uh, quite a bit with graphs. So it should make uh, be no surprise that if I grab the center of this graph and start moving it around, the graph actually doesn't, the, the basic graph doesn't change too much. If I take a look at this, so I'm going to move this, the center to be at negative 4 comma negative 3. The actual equation for the parabola is now x, the quantity of x plus 4 being squared equals this p-value, 4 times the p-value, which is 27 fourths, times y plus p. That's because the, the x-value has been shifted to the left 4 units, so that's x minus a negative 4, or in other words, x plus 4. And the y-value has been shifted down 3 units, that's y minus a negative 3, or in other words, y plus 3. So all of your concepts between of shifts and translations still hold from previous courses. I highly recommend Googling um, uh, Mathematica demonstrations and typing in conic sections, equations, and graphs to get this and, and to play with this a little bit so that you get a better idea of what conic sections can do. It's a good point to mention right now uh, the theorem for shifted con conics. Recall that uh, the equation of the parabola we developed before had its vertex at the origin. However, if we want to shift things, uh, and again, this, this just comes from knowing shifts and reflections for all graphs. If you want to shift this to uh, where the vertex is at h comma k, then our focus is no longer going to be at zero comma p. Our 
focus is now going to be starting at our our vertex which is hk and shifted up p units so it's h comma k plus p and the directrix also is referenced by starting at our new vertex which is h comma k and going down by p units so k minus p and now here we have this shifted conic okay so we would be making a mistake if we didn't try an example for finding uh, the equation of a parabola so let's go ahead or not find an equation but for graphing a parabola here so in this example we're asked to find the focus vertex and directrix of the parabola of the following parabola and sketch its graph now the fact that there's a couple terms with x in them here means that it's going to be a shifted parabola I'll go ahead and clean this up a little bit by isolating y here and you just get a beautiful 2x squared minus 12x uh, plus 16 and I know that this is likely going to use the format maybe I'll use the color blue here it's a shifted conic so I'm gonna look at having something in the end of 4p times y minus k is equal to the quantity x minus h being squared so that I have a center or in other words a vertex a, a, a shifted vertex here and then I can find my p value based on whatever the constant is that I'll end up on y let's clean this up a little bit I'll factor out a 2 I'll be left with x squared minus 6x plus 8 and I am actually gonna pause here for a moment to mention that yes I know that this factors and maybe I'll put this in a light gray color I know that this factors to x minus 4 times x minus 2 but if you look at this formula here we're not looking to have y equals um, or y minus k equals x minus 4 times x minus 2 we're looking for it to be a perfect square here and if we factor this right now this is definitely not a perfect square so what we have to do is complete the square it's a very common step uh, with these so we're gonna uh, I'll, I'll write it in blue right here we complete the square this implies that y is equal to 2 times and then since we complete the square this becomes x minus 3 quantity squared minus 2 and now I look at the form I want to end up in I'll just add 2 to both sides so I get a y plus 2 I'll divide both sides by 2 so 1 half is equal to x minus 3 quantity squared that is the format I want to be in if you notice and I'll put this in blue 4 P the coefficient on this y term is one half or in other words P is equal to one eighth and that gives me everything I need I have P I have the center um, so let's go ahead and, and talk about this the center obviously in this case is at x equals 3 y equals a negative 2 uh, let's see the or I shouldn't say the center it's I, I often say center I mean vertex when I say that the vertex here um, it's the focus be very aware of which way this opens since this is positive sort of like y equals you can look at it here it's like y equals uh, 2x squared almost so it's opening up so our focus is going to be above this point in the y direction above this in fact it's going to be at 3 comma negative 2 plus an eighth which is a negative 15 over 8 and of course the directrix is going to be again because we're opening up the directrix is a horizontal line y equals it's going to start at a height of negative 2 and it's going to drop down by 1 8 so we're going to be at a negative 17 8 and now I can actually graph this entire uh, parabola if I want to I'm actually not going to graph it here you know how to graph parabolas 